Okay, can I be honest with you guys? Can I have a heart-to-heart -heart with you right now? Father-to-son moment. Or, I don't know, father-to-son at moment. Most people who play Don't Starve Together don't really go to the ocean much. Most new players probably avoid it, and the only reason most people ever even go into it in the first place is for progression. Like, you know, the Lunar Island or Crab King. Aside from that, most people don't really pay much attention to it, or even know much about it in general. And I'm definitely part of that group. So in order to expand my mind and my tastes, I've decided to try and survive 100 days on the ocean alone. Will this be tedious? Yes. Like, all of it. But hey, I like tedious things. And of course, this video is inspired by the exact same challenge done by Bidobams with all the same rules. And if you enjoy this, then you should definitely check him out too. So what are the rules? Well, I know I said I'd be following the same rules as my main man Bido, but I made just a little tweak to it, if you'll forgive me. The original rule as far as time constraints go was that you had three days of prep time and you leave on the morning of day four. But in his video, he was also playing it with a friend, and as I'm a loner and a loser, I can't cover as much ground. In order to balance this, I've given myself a generous 4.5 days, which I wasn't even planning on giving myself that much time, but you'll see later, it was a bit difficult to do. I ended up getting really unlucky with some of the resources I needed, like gold, and I just literally wouldn't have been able to make progress if I didn't extend the time. Like, I didn't even have enough gold for an alchemy engine until day 4, so I couldn't have even left if I wanted to. And the other option was to restart, so I decided to stick it out a little bit. I hope and pray that you'll forgive me. The other rules are pretty simple. You can visit and completely ransack Burroughs Island if you feel like it, you just can't build on it. But the Moonquay and Lunar Island are a complete no-go zone, and that's it for rules. Pretty simple. We're just rocking the default world settings as usual, and for mods, extra UI, health bars, realistic placement, and geometric placement. So, without any further ado, it's time to get my socks wet, which I don't really mind all that much, I kind of like having wet socks. For this run, I decided to go with Windy. The main reason for this is that ocean combat can be a bit difficult and frustrating, so having something that can do it for you is pretty helpful. Abigail's also super helpful in the prep phase for defending me and killing other things. I rushed off on prep day one and started gathering anything I could find. I was in a blind rage, punching any butterflies I could find. My main concern was not renewable resources like flint and gold, but I still wanted a good supply of sticks and grass to start, although I could always get those later too. I made a pick and made sure that I grabbed some niter, because I definitely needed it if I wanted to get past summer. Also made sure to commit some spider genocide so that I could make a sale as soon as possible. Prep day 2 was started off by starting a forest fire. I wanted to get some charcoal for a crock pot and maybe even some drying racks, if I feel like getting really nutty. Most importantly, I started evicting the local pig population. The boards and cut stone I got from destroying their houses would save me days worth of gathering that I literally didn't have the time for. I'm gonna be honest, I never even used all the cut stones I got from this. I also came across something really interesting while I was looking for more pig houses. I knew I'd have to come back for that before I left. And as if it couldn't get any better, I found Chester just about 5 feet away, which would be a huge boost to the amount of stuff I could hold. Prep day 3, I started gathering the charcoal from the burnt trees and spent an embarrassing amount of time getting grass. Abigail made an unwilling sacrifice so I could grab the terrarium, and I figured that this would be a good way to spice up the ocean adventure. Or get myself killed. You know, either or. Good chunk of prep day 4 was spent getting chased around by the pigs that the guard pigs turned into when I got the terrarium. I, of course, thought that they would turn into normal pigs when it turned to daytime, but this is not the case. At this point, I was really getting blue balls on gold, and I basically spent the entire day looking for the mosaic biome, but hey, what are you gonna do? Honestly, if I hadn't gotten this unlucky with gold, I probably could have left today too. Although, I eventually found a graveyard and then a meteor field, so I guess my gold needs were met finally. I FINALLY got my boat down on day 5, and the challenge had begun. I was honestly really behind on the boat making process. I ended up leaving about 3 quarters of the way through day 5, but don't worry, I try to make up for it later because I was feeling guilty about it the whole time. Starting off strong on day 1, what you'll notice pretty quickly is that I barely brought any food. There's a pretty good reason for this. I forgot to get food. Luckily, I got a message in a bottle right away, so I knew where Pearl's Island was. I also came across some salt formations pretty quickly, which I didn't want to visit right now because I don't feel like having a hole in my boat on day one. I paddled through the night because I'd be pretty screwed if I didn't get anything to eat. 
Day two, I decided to make my way to Pearl's Island and just hope that I find something. Luckily for me, I stumbled across a waterlogged biome in the process, just as it started raining. And I'll tell you right now, this is going to be my home for the next 100 days. This place is absolutely essential, and honestly, I don't think this challenge is even possible without it. I immediately started plundering the natural resources. Finally decided to place my alchemy engine, and it was already getting cramped. You're going to see a lot of issues come up later because of the way I place things on my boat. Just a heads up. Had my first encounter with a sea strider, and yeah, you're going to be seeing a lot of these guys. This is where Abigail really shines and makes this challenge way easier than it should be, if I'm being honest. On to day three, you're going to notice throughout this video that I cut out a lot. This is because, honestly, 90% of this challenge is just downtime. Basically, anything you do requires you to slowly paddle or sail around. I don't know if this is the only way to get stumps, but this is the only thing I knew worked at the time. I decided to make some armor before I got myself killed, and started killing the local sea striders while I fixed some figs. Also tried fishing the ocean for the first time ever, unsuccessfully, but after a couple of dries, I managed to actually catch something on day 4. Figs are actually really good for fish bait, and large fish give twice as much hunger, so it was definitely worth it. The rest of the day was spent trying not to starve. Go figure. Also, I placed a chest for extra storage. Day 5, I finally made my way to Pearl's Island while also getting harassed by not one, but two sharks. So that was great. Chester almost got killed, but in a very skillful and arguably stupid move, I managed to save him literally a couple seconds before he would have died. I grabbed all the kelp from Pearl's Island and loaded her drying racks with monster meat because I don't like her. Abigail went beast mode at night and killed one of the sharks for me. Day 6, I traded in some bottles to get a pension witch blueprint and slapped it down on my boat. I then spent the rest of the day cleaning up the shell clusters around Pearl's Island, leading into Day 7, where I finished cleaning up Pearl's Island and decided I had been there long enough, and started heading home under the light from the full moon. Ended up finding a treasure map right after, which was pretty convenient since I just got my pension winch. Day 8, and all I really did was gather some resources and plant some seaweed. There are going to be a lot of days dedicated to food or resources because of just how long everything takes to do. So, get ready for that. On to day 9 and now is a good time to go and get that treasure I found. The treasure chests were great because they gave you some items you can't get anywhere else on the ocean and can even give you repair kits and boat parts. The rest of the day was spent sailing. Go figure. Day 10 I said hello to the Lunar Island and was really disappointed that I couldn't go on it. I had considered doing this challenge there but I figured this would be more fun and you know someone else already made a video about that, right? Can't call me a copycat. Although, never mind. Navigated around the island and decided to try and get a lobster for food. Um, unfortunately, and to my horror, I found out that you can't eat lunar lobsters, and I fell to my knees and started crying. Day 11, right before getting the treasure, I found another one right by my base, and this also revealed some barnacles really close by as well. Pulled up my first ever sunken chest, and I was stunned at what was inside of it. I cracked it open and out poured Thulacite and Thulacite armor, a yellow gem, and some gears, and even a lantern, which I was really happy about, because I didn't really have a chance to go into the caves during prep. But most importantly, I got a full durability pick slash axe, and yeah, this completely solved any flint problems I was worrying about, so great. The durabilities on these things are pretty nutty, and they can both mine and chop faster than a regular axe or pickaxe, so I was pretty set. And on day 12, I got yet another treasure map, and I was honestly getting pretty amazed at how lucky I was. Got back home and tried not to starve to death, as usual. Doing some fishing and stuff, you know the drill. I did find out I can actually just fish with rot, which it isn't as effective as figs, but I'm also not wasting food, so... Day 14, and unfortunately I had to watch Abigail get killed and tank my sanity, because she decided to fight a grass gator. I must have not been that upset about it, because my notes just say Abigail got clapped. Keep in mind, I never played Wendy, so I hadn't figured out that I could just put her back in the flower yet. But don't worry, I eventually do. Spent the rest of the day chopping trees, because I was out of logs. And I get my first visit from Wavy Jones, or as I like to call him, Mr. Hands. Day 14, I got another treasure map, and it was getting pretty ridiculous at this point. At night, decided to start on base as I wanted something, you know, at least a little bit impressive by the end of 100 days. You know me, 
I didn't want to just survive, I wanted to thrive. So I started setting up a kitchen and also having a crock pot would make food and health way easier to deal with. Finished setting up the kitchen, making a fridge with the gears I had gotten, and that was about it. Day 15 started with Abigail killing some spiders as usual, and I finally made some good food since I can actually use my monster meat now. Placed a drawing rack because why not? Guess I felt nutty and started dropping off some stuff to make more space. It's hard enough to maneuver around my base, but whenever I'm picking up random items, it can get it a little bit annoying. Pulled up the chest that was close by, but I still wanted to wait to open it. Tried to get some barnacles, and it was a really good thing I got a lantern from that first chest, because the fish around the barnacles will put out any fire that gets near them. Day 16, and I just traded in my bottles for a bunch of shells. I really didn't know what to do with them at this point, so I just started littering around her island. Because, you know, I don't really like her all that much. Brought the chest onto the island and cracked it open. This chest wasn't completely ethereal like the last one, but it did have some boat patches, so I definitely wasn't going to complain about it. Also some Malbatross feathers, which was surprising, but not unwelcome. On to day 17, and this is a pretty big day because finally, it was winter. Which I completely forgot about. I guess the prep time had thrown me off a bit, and I expected it to come four days later, but eh, whatever. Luckily for me, winter really isn't that much different from what I've been doing. All the ocean resources are still there, including the grass, twigs, and figs from the waterlogged biome, and as far as cold goes, I've got a campfire about a couple of feet away at all times, so that didn't really make a difference. I got back home a little later and Abigail killed yet another shark. Just want to say that I think Wendy is one of, if not the best character for this challenge, just because of that. Day 18, I got into a brawl with just about everything in the ocean, and I was actually pretty happy to kill some squids since they dropped actual light bulbs. Did a little bit of cooking, and I actually had a decent food supply at this point. I was already starting to feel just a little bit more confident in my ocean abilities, whether that was false confidence or not, but hey, still there. Day 19, I started sailing to get a couple of those treasures I found. I just want to say, winter on the ocean is really relaxing. It's already pretty peaceful and the snow combined with the blue hue on everything looks pretty nice. I was honestly just chilling and listening to music while I was sailing around. Came across another salt formation and got some salt and killed some cookie cutters. Once again, Abigail trivialized this. In fact, Abigail could just hit them in the water and they would just leave me alone. So I effectively had a cookie cutter repellent. By the morning of day 20, I had plenty of cookie cutter shells and got back on track. I had started getting a good supply of boards from these debris I kept finding. They were honestly really common and you only had to smash them with a hammer, and so they really helped me out with the grind on this challenge. Finally, I found and pulled up the first chest and got the other one not too long after, just as it turned to nighttime. And you'll never guess what I did on day 21. The answer may surprise you. I spent today sailing back home. Still on my way back home late into day 22, I accidentally made a produce scale, which just wasted a lot of my boards. Went into a fury and did a drive-by on a tree. Definitely on purpose. And Abigail took out her anger on the wildlife. As usual, I guess. Disaster struck that night though, as Wavy Jones came for his routine visit. Except this time, he decided to be smart about it and appear behind my think tank, where I couldn't even step on him. Of course, he started screwing with my stuff like the silly guy he is and kept opening my sail, despite how much I tried to close it. Ended up just having to last until morning like five nights at Freddy's. Day 23, found another treasure map, and this one was on the opposite side of the map. I'd save that for later. Aside from that, this is just another day of collecting and paddling around the waterlogged biome. And cooking food, of course. Day 24, I killed some more squids and found out how to make some fig kebabs. They're not actually that great for food, as they only give about 25 points, but each kebab gives 15 sanity and 20 health, and they're super easy to make, so I basically never have to worry about sanity again. Although I do end up making a bunch of top hats, I guess. Then I just bumped into trees for twigs and grass. Day 25, I finally remembered that I had those treasure chests to open. I bet you were wondering why I hadn't opened them. Don't know how, but I completely forgot about them. Oh yeah, I just killed spiders and kept gathering all day before sailing to Pearls through the night. Arriving at Pearls on day 26 with style, I started unloading my absolute mother load of treasure, my cheeks quivering with excitement. You could even say I was whimpering. Started hammering them without mercy, and the loot I got was positively nutty. First chest basically had the same runes loot I had gotten before, 
pick slash axe and all, but I also ended up getting two boat kits and even more feathers. Yeah, these chests were actually insane. They may not be worth the time in like an actual playthrough, because you could probably get this stuff way quicker, save for the Malbatross feathers. But out in the ocean, they're really good. <laughs> made a lightning rod for spring and made a thermal stone so I wasn't wasting so much fuel on the fire pit. Of course, there really wasn't anything to use flint for at this point, so it really wasn't that much of a waste, honestly. Day 27 and I went back home and tried to sort out what I had gotten so my bow wasn't cluttered with items. Also went ahead and expanded on our base with the boat kits I had gotten. Day 28 was just spent chilling at base and killing stuff. Well, actually Abigail killed everything, as I'm a man with no enemies, of course. On day 29, I was looking at the day and night cycle and feeling a little bit bored. I got a great idea. At least I thought it was a great idea. At the very least, it was an entertaining idea. I was finally gonna put that terrarium to work. So I grabbed the armor I'd gotten, made some food, and started heading over to Pearl's Island. Yeah, I was definitely a little bit underprepared and overconfident, but hey, that's how I like to be. So I arrived at the island, waited until night, and started the fight. The fight went a lot worse than I thought it would, as you'd probably expect. I found out pretty much instantly that Abigail was completely useless. I would just hit her as it charged and deal a massive amount of damage, and without any help from Abigail, Wendy's lack of damage really started to show. Which wouldn't be that bad if I wasn't just using a spear. Before night time I was able to get it to its second phase and Abigail died pretty quickly after that. Day 30 the eye left as the sun rose and I was left to wait until the next night. Till then I just sat around fishing. Somehow this night went even worse. In his second phase he spits out way more minions which I don't have the damage to deal with effectively and he charges way more. I never realized how hard this fight is without a walking cane. I wasn't able to get many hits in and eventually just started ignoring the minions. But of course, in the morning I had to kill them. After that, I went fishing again. This night was basically the same as the last one, but luckily, my armor ended up breaking in the middle of the fight. I ended up just running around trying not to die until morning. The eye was almost dead, but I really didn't feel like taking any more chances. In the morning, I tried to quickly make a football helmet, but ended up getting a nibble taken out of me in the process. But I took care of him, and also killed the lure plant that's guaranteed to spawn at the beginning of spring. Oh, hey, wait, yeah, it's spring, isn't it? Um, I'll talk about that after the boss fight. I started the terrarium one last time, and I actually decided to use the pick slash axe for just a bit of extra damage, even though he was basically on death's door and I should have done this earlier. Wanting to embarrass the eye as much as possible, I finished him off with a boomerang, and then probably got hit in the face with it. And with that, the Eye of Terror was defeated. I collected the eye mask and milky whites, and at this point, I was practically giggling and kicking my feet at that probably frustrating to watch victory. Wavy Jones came to congratulate me too, except this time, he decided to appear behind a seed that had fallen onto my boat, which, unlike my think tank, I could move, thankfully. Luckily, my sail was just facing the island, so he didn't cause that much damage. Day 33. I didn't really do anything. I just sailed home and sat around at base. I don't know if I was unwinding after the fight, or I just thought I deserved a vacation, but I just didn't do anything. So, I might as well talk about spring. Luckily, you don't have to worry about a temperature. I just have to try and stay dry so I don't turn schizophrenic or anything. And I guess your fire won't last as long, but it's really not that big of a deal. Day 34, Abigail dealt with an annoying shark, and I started building up the base a bit more. I wanted it to look pretty nice by the end of the challenge, and I think I eventually succeeded, but yeah, definitely not right now. Day 35, I spent collecting some resources and food as I had used up quite a bit of both in the fight with the Eye of Terror. Day 36, still collecting. I built another crock pot to speed up cooking just a bit, and I also made an umbrella to help me deal with the rain, since this was the first time in a long time that I had to go through spring without an umbrella. Rest in peace, Deerclops. 37, I started sailing towards one of the treasures I had found and sailed all day, only stopping at night to catch a lobster, which I accidentally killed. Day 38 was just sailing. Go figure.
day 39, I finally pulled up the chest and nearly soiled my pants in happiness from what I found whenever I opened it. The chest had a walking gain, which, you know, under normal circumstances that would be cool, but walking 20% faster from one end of the raft to the other isn't really that helpful. The main thing here is the 8 papyrus that it dropped. I know that probably doesn't seem like a super big deal, but trust me, this means I can finally make a birdcage. And with all the monster meat I was getting just from being at base, yeah, food would never be an issue again. I sailed back home a happy man. Well, a kind of happier man, I guess. Day 40, still sailing, unsurprisingly. Against the map edge, too. I guess I was feeling dangerous. Day 41, finally home and almost starving. I was feeling curious and wanted to see if a pig house could be put on a boat. So I built the house, but I'd have to wait until morning to see what the pig would do. Oh yeah, I also got a narwhal horn from the last chest, but I didn't really know what it did, so I just put it away. And then forgot about it forever. Day 42, and sure enough, the pig was up and around, insulting me and jumping around like he owned the place. I made a bird trap and some food before heading over the pearls and waiting until next morning. Day 43, and I swear, catching a bird usually takes me like two seconds, but this took me nearly all day. I honestly thought I was doing something wrong. I even checked the wiki to see if I could catch puffins. I know Pearl's Island had crows, but I wanted a puffin because it fits the theme. Eventually, after waiting way too long, in my opinion, I caught a puffin and I could finally go back to base. Oh yeah, I also officially beat Bido's score. Got back to base on day 44 and gathered some more food, of course. I also made a very nice bird cage. Went ahead with the pirate skin because, you know, it seemed pretty fitting. I stuffed the puffin in and welcomed it to the family. Next day I spent the morning organizing a bit, and I even made a stone cutter so that I could make some statues for the base, you know, make it look a little nice, and flex the bosses I kill. Yep, you heard me right. I said bosses plural, but be patient, I'll get there, okay? Also decided to pre-build an endothermic pit since summer was already starting to creep up on me. Day 46, dealing with a shark all day while tidying up, cause you know, that's my luck. Kept trying to place a lure plant in my base for the free food, but Abigail kept killing it when she was riled up, so I eventually just gave up on that. I may have accidentally sailed into my base when I tried to leave, all the while a shark was just hopping around, trying to act like I wasn't embarrassed and it didn't really bother me, although I was already getting teary-eyed. I continued sailing, hoping that somehow when I returned my base would have magically fixed itself. I was also really close to having enough feathers for a Malbatross sail, and I was really hoping the treasure was going to have it for me. Also got some glass at Pearl's Island for some of the statues I wanted to make, and almost had an intimate moment with this narwhal when I tried to leave. Luckily, I guess sailing into him didn't seem to bother him too much. Day 47, and I finally found another waterlogged biome. Oh yeah, you already know. I spent all day plundering the ecosystem. But on day 48, I reached the chest and, as if to answer my prayers, had the rest of the feathers I needed. So I started sailing home to begin assembling the parts to make it. Finally home on day 49 and Abigail gave my poor lure plant a love tap. Used the glass I had gotten to make an Eye of Terror statue and let me tell ya, this looked pretty sick. Placed it next to the terrarium and the base was already looking better. Definitely not good, but better for sure. And then I just started getting materials to make the new sail and it was finally complete. Didn't waste any time slapping down this bad boy in maybe not the best position. I just cooked for the rest of the day and unintentionally made a pierogi, which I had no idea I could make with the stuff I had, but hey, cool. Day 50, and this was an exciting day and a big milestone in my progress. Both because I was on day 50, so halfway to 100 days, and I got to try out my brand spanking new sail. I was wiggling with excitement as I lifted the sail and, man, it was fast. Like, ridiculously fast. That or slowly floating around for 50 days made me forget what going more than one mile per hour felt like. The G-Force nearly tore me to shreds as I was blazing around in the raft equivalent of a Bugatti. It was honestly a bit scary to use though because I didn't have any time to stop if something got in my way. Day 51 and I was still soaking in the enjoyment of my sail and feared I would start sailing towards another chest. This one was basically on the opposite side of the map as my base so it was a perfect test for the new sail. I just spent the day blazing around with the wind in my hair. I had to put it away a few times when I came across some rocks though, and that kind of killed the fun, but hey, what are you going to do? 
Day 52, I finally placed down my endothermic fire pit because guess what? It's summertime, baby. What does that entail exactly? Well, it's essentially going to be the exact same as winter, except I just fuel the other fire pit instead of the normal one. Once again, I'm always on the boat, so this isn't an issue. And I used one of the thermal stones I had gotten from a previous chest, so I didn't have to fuel it all the time at the very least. There's also a new bright hue that makes it look like I'm in Breaking Bad and hurts my eyes if I stare at it too long. The only real bad part is there's kind of a small chance that anything on my boat could just catch on fire if I don't catch it quick enough, which is kind of a big issue because that's just like an instant loss. I eventually figured out I can actually just raise and instantly put down my new sail to get a quick burst of speed without putting myself in too much danger. Finally got that chest and its drops were kinda useless to be honest. Definitely not worth the distance, but I guess I did get a blue gem, and I kinda felt bad for not getting a Presta Hattitator, but that would've taken too much time anyway. Day 53, more sailing. Since I was already pretty much halfway around the world, I just decided to go ahead and sail completely around the island. which. Didn't really take that long, honestly. Also found another treasure map that I could hit up on the way, but that was about it, aside from nearly sailing off the edge of the world. All in all, pretty chill day. Day 54, I pulled up the chest and the loot was... is... okay, I guess. More gems and pickaxes that I didn't have a use for. Most importantly, though, it did give me a good pile of gold nuggets, which I also didn't really have a use for. <laughs> they were nice to have, though. So I just started heading toward the waterlogged biome. Spent day 5 gathering a bunch of logs and other useful stuff. Great thing about summer is that the daylight basically lasts all day, so I don't really have to worry about sitting around or having trouble seeing at night. Day 56, I sailed all day again. Getting home right before nighttime and officially completing my trip around the world. I really don't know how I didn't find the moon quay. It was a little bit disappointing, but maybe it was for the best. Day 57, and the very observant among you may have noticed that since the first time I saw the pig, he's completely disappeared. You're probably wondering where he went, too. Well, yeah, so was I. I assumed that maybe since pigs weren't to be in the ocean, the game just decided to erase him from existence as soon as he's out of render distance. This isn't what happened, but you'll find out soon enough. Additionally, the pig house almost caught on fire and burned down the base, so I just decided to destroy it and move the boat out of the sun. Since that happened, I should probably explain. The state of the waterlogged biome not only provides shade from the heat of summer, meaning I won't overheat, but it also prevents anything in its shade from burning. The rest of the day was for cooking and trying to tidy up base a bit. Continuing on day 58, I ended up sacrificing boards to make a couple of chests, just to clean up the floor a little bit. So I just spent the day getting some of the clutter and cleaning up my act. I was relatively satisfied, I guess. I'm gonna be honest, it's kind of hard to make the boats look good. Day 59 and I feel really stupid because I completely forgot I could make bacon and eggs. If you don't know, bacon and eggs is a really good food source, only using 2 eggs and 2 meats, but restores 75 hunger and heals 20 health. It basically only takes me 3 matcha meat and 1 leafy meat to make, so yeah, I should have been making this. I basically spend all this day making sculptures and trying to make the base look a little bit better. Day 60, I finally found a use for that blue gym and made a salt box. Salt boxes can preserve food for twice as long as a fridge, but only if it isn't cooked food. Which, you know, really isn't that much of a downside, so I just had a better fridge. Made another sculpture, but Wendy wasn't a super big fan of it. Don't know why it took me so long, but I finally made a trawler net and put it close to base for some passive fishing. Also got some fireflies to refuel my lantern. Day 61, sticks and grass. All day. Day 62, I finally got a fish from the net and some squids decided to drop by and check out the new decorations. Unfortunately, Abigail exercised her rights by killing them for coming onto our property. Cooked some food and just kind of sat around base all day. Not really much to write home about. Day 63, I went to Pearl's again, but as per tradition, a shark came by to shove me into a locker and take my lunch money. I'm gonna be honest, these guys were a huge nuisance throughout this challenge. I probably would have been killed by one if I didn't have Abigail. I kind of feel like they spawn a bit too often. Maybe that's just because I've been here for too long. I took refuge from the shark on the island, but I had completely forgotten about one of the most important things about summer. The ground started shaking beneath me before a sinkhole appeared right under my feet. Apparently, Antlion wasn't too happy with me. 
I guess you just have to cry about it for now. I couldn't believe what I saw on day 64. I have no idea how, but the pig had somehow gone to Burl's Island. Oh, and I also learned that his name was Majorian. I was insanely confused, but happy to see that he was okay. Maybe he could help Pearl get over Crab King. And about five seconds later, the run almost ended when my chest started smoldering. I can't believe I even noticed it, but luckily I did and put it out just in time. After that scare, I left and started sailing towards another chest I had found, while also having to deal with the shark on the way. Luckily though, he couldn't keep up when I shifted into maximum overdrive. I don't really want to talk about what happened with the cookie cutters. Can we ignore that? Anyway, uh, I pulled up yet another chest, and this one had yet another golden pick, and even a green gem. Great. Can't wait to use that. At least I got some gold out of it. Sailed all the way back to Pearl's because I had a gift for her. Using some cookie cutter shells, a firefly, and tin boards, I decided to fix up her little shack, and I felt pretty good about that. Then I felt pretty bad about it after I realized I just used tin boards. Unfortunately, this game doesn't let you destroy your house, so I just had to live with it. Majorian also slept on my boat that night, even though I didn't even invite him. On the morning of day 66, Pearl got to see what I did to the house, and she either really loved it or really hated it, because she tried to come with me when I tried to leave. Then she did a little dance, for whatever reason. Finally, she threw her bobber onto my boat as I sailed away. I sailed home in confusion for the rest of the day. Day 67? It's officially autumn again, baby. I made a bunch of food and celebrated by doing my favorite activity in the whole world. Yep, that's right. I got tweaking grass again. It's worth noting that geometric placement isn't enabled past this point, because my game crashed and I forgot to re-enable the mod. I also accidentally made a light around my character by loading the world at dusk. But hey, it was a full moon night, so I didn't think it was cheaty. also found out that you can burn knobbly trees for charcoal. Day 68, I spent all day going around the ocean looking for debris and trying to get some more boards after, you know, generously wasting all of them on Burl. also found this bobber, which I uh, definitely didn't mistake for something else. Day 69, ugh. to my surprise, I came across Crab King. Stop by to say hello and let him know there's a pig living with his wife. Then I found yet another waterlogged biome right beside him, which I gleefully spent the day ravaging, as I deserved. They 70. finished ransacking the place and was just sailing around when suddenly Malbatross is just right there, chilling in the middle of the ocean. Listen, I already watched Bitto Band's video, so I decided to go ahead and get out of there before getting my teeth kicked in. I was definitely planning on fighting Malbadross soon, but yeah, not this soon. This did, however, remind me to start preparing for that fight, and oh boy, would it be a fight. Day 71 was even more grinding. This would be the general pattern for these later days as there really isn't much to do, and even the things I wanted to do were kind of resources. I also wanted to go ahead and start getting some healing food for the Malbadross fight too. I decided at this point that I would fight Malbadross at the start of winter. So I basically had a countdown. Day 72 and I finally made an anchor. Once again, if you're wondering why I didn't make one before, I had a good reason. Which is that I forgot that they existed. But the anchor would be a key part of the Malbatross boss fight, so it's a good thing I remembered. Or that I looked it up. I also put a bunch of bumpers on the boat with the shells that I had gotten from all those chests. I didn't really know if they would help that much, but I just kind of figured why not, you know. It was also on this day that I discovered Barnacle Nigiri, which is basically just the ocean equivalent of pierogi. I chose this to be the healing food for my fight. Day 73? Even more cooking, along with working on base a little bit. A grass skater also got stuck on my boat somehow. I don't know what happened to him though. Day 74 and I was in the middle of a fight with a shark, and it just did whatever this is, and never came back. I guess I was kind of mentally tired because I just chilled with Pearl for a long time before leaving and also for getting Chester in the process, who I had dropped off on the island to keep safe from the shark that started tweaking out. Day 75 and after a long day of sailing, I finally realized that I didn't have Chester with me. I started sailing back but got entranced by the nature combat unfolding before me, which 
honestly lasted way too long because the shark just kept kiting the lilies, who couldn't even hit the shark because it was too fast. Day 76, I, for some reason, made the stupid decision to try and pass straight through the middle of them. It went about as well as you would expect. I got caught in the crosshair and got a hole in my boat as a result. But hey, I was able to get a couple of seed shells and even a seed to plant my own sea lily from one of them that the shark killed. And I wasted the day on a rescue mission for Chester. Day 77, I finally got Chester and put him where he belongs. Then I sailed home as per usual. The trawl net was actually doing a really great job, and I don't know why I didn't put this here sooner. It was also about time I made a tin fishing bin to go with it, which would keep fish fresh forever. Which was pretty ridiculous when you considered how much storage space it had. I also had a stare down with Wavy Jones. I guess he couldn't mess with anything, so he just kind of sat there awkwardly. Day 78, and I really had the boss fight on my mind at this point. I was a little bit disappointed with my weapon situation to say the least. I would have loved to have a handbat right about now. I figured I'd be able to turn Majorian into a wear pig for a guaranteed handbat, but I also felt so guilty about it that I just decided to flip a coin to decide. Unfortunately for me, but good for Majorian I guess, he gets to live to see another day. I just decided to spend the day working on base, adding a new raft so I had more room for, I don't know, activities I guess. I was honestly just flexing at this point because I decided to place a tent on the raft. And then I placed another raft. Day 79. And the days are going to start going by just a bit quicker for a while. I doubt you really want to break down for the next few days because they're all roughly the same. And you've already seen me resource collecting plenty of times at this point. In preparation for Malvatross, I spent the entirety of day 79 just getting materials to prepare and get set up. I was also lucky enough to come across this cluster of debris for three free boards. I would also start to farm food for more barnacle nigiri, as I'm going to need a lot. Day 80 is basically the same. And so is 81. I also had to cook a lot of food, as a lot of it was starting to go bad. That night, two shadow hands spawned in, and I had no idea that was even possible in a raft, but hey, you learn something new every day. Day 82, you're gonna laugh at this one. I was collecting materials, and also putting my bumpers to the test in the process. I also couldn't tell you how many grass skaters I killed during these 100 days. Day 83, I spent the day once again getting a ton of food to make loads of barnacle nigiri for the fight. My food supply was also starting to look pretty good, if I do say so myself. Well, you know, pretty good by ocean standards, I guess. Day 84, call me Walter White, cause I be cooking. And I got what I thought was a pretty good amount of nigiri. Also had an abundance of wood at this point, so I added two more rafts. I didn't even have a use for them. I was just making rafts for the sake of making rafts at this point. Day 85. I was honestly pretty fed up with my base layout at this point. I wanted something a bit more visually pleasing and impressive than this. So I started the very slow and very tedious process of jumping between every one of my rafts and positioning them around this big tree. This took forever, but hey, I was listening to a Windigoon video the whole time so I was pretty well spaced out. I wasn't completely finished with this until day 86. To be honest, I could have been done a lot sooner, but I kept being unsatisfied with where some of the boats were, like the kitchen not being next to the birdcage, and switching them around took like a few black hole lifespans to do. But in the end, I parked my raft at the bottom and patted myself on the back, because I thought it was looking pretty good, all things considered. Definitely better than it was before. Then I just tried to mentally prepare myself for what I'd have to do the next day. Day 87, and it's officially winter, which means today's the day I fight Malbatross. This would be the most difficult part of this entire challenge. I was feeling pretty tense if I'm being honest, but also a little overconfident. I had never actually fought Malbatross before, and I had no idea what I was getting myself into. The first one I had found despawned by this point, so after looking at the wiki on how to spawn it in, I got my trawler and everything I had prepared, and set off. Although I had to get some monster meat on the way for the trawler bait, also got my last treasure map I would ever get. I chose this shoal that I found right next to my base, and I put my trawl in the water and baited it. Now I just had to wait. Except, Malbatross spawned in pretty much instantly. I muted the video I was listening to at this point. That is insane, how did that happen? Well if you'll remember, the- 
and just tried to psych myself up for this fight. It turned to night and I just started heading in, but Abigail got a head start on me so I threw my boomerang to get the Malatross's attention, and I was so surprised by how far its waves pushed me back that I had to check to make sure my anchor was down. And it was, somehow. Abby had already done a good chunk of damage honestly, but it was pretty clear she wouldn't last long, so I saved her just in time, and was, of course, still getting pushed around by the waves. I went in again and threw my boomerang to get its attention and finally, I started fighting it. I had no idea how much range it had, or that it had an AoE attack. As a consequence, Chester started getting slapped silly. It was at this point that I realized how close I was to the world edge and started panicking and trying to row back, although my anchor was down the whole time. I just had to keep fighting. Continuing through day 88, this fight was really starting to get annoying. It just kept pushing me away. I hit it again with the boomerang to get its attention and kept fighting. This is where my raft layout came to haunt me. You'll notice now that my alchemy engine and two fire pits essentially formed a wall that I just kept running into when I was trying to kite the boss and I took way too many unnecessary hits from this. It got on top of me at one point and I just had to tank it as, you know, what could I do really? I also had no idea that it was hurting my boat with each attack. And inevitably, Chester died in the crossfire of our fight. Now in the third phase, Malbatross started diving right through my boat, instantly destroying my sail and taking out another chunk of my health. Realizing I was down to my last helmet, I managed to craft another one as it took out the remaining durability, leaving me completely vulnerable. It was able to do 75 damage before I crafted a new one. I finally made one and dodged just in time. I made another one just to be safe, but I was also out of rope at this point. I wouldn't be able to make any more. To add more insult to injury, Malatross destroyed my other sail. And at this point, I finally realized that my boat was taking damage, just as it was almost destroyed. I decided to just start tanking damage while I repaired it because I was so panicked. At this point, Malatross just started pushing my boat around again, which was really frustrating. I could barely even get any hits in as it just kept diving, which really made the fight drag on. It felt like the last 500 health made up at least half of the fight because it just wouldn't let me hit it. But it got close to me again and I just committed to tanking it. But finally, on day 88, the Malbatross was dead. The only thing I could think about near the end of the fight is that if I died, then the last 87 days and all the time I put into this would have been wasted. I surveyed the damage, lamenting Chester's death, and wondering why I didn't leave him at base. Then I used Malbatross's beak to row home in silence. Getting back, you can see the exact moment that my brain checked back in. The American deal with the Russians wasn't made official until- But I had officially done it. I was officially the ruler of the ocean. You know, ignoring the Moonquay. Once the shock of my boat getting some CBT from Rabatross was over, I was honestly really happy. I mean, I could always just rebuild the boat. The important part is that I didn't die. Finally, I proudly displayed my well-deserved statue. Also took some time to clean up both the shambles and Chester's corpse off of my boat while trying to mentally recoup. Day 90, and as per usual, I started to grind so that I could get my boat back to its former glory. So it was back to ramming trees for me. Luckily, Malbatross gave me all the feathers I needed to make a new sail, so I didn't have to go and find any more chests for it. Day 91, and I finally start repairing my boat. I destroyed the think tank, as I had gotten about everything I could from it, and I could really use the boards right now. I did feel a bit sad about it though, it was like losing an old friend at this point. Day 92, I finished fixing up the boat and started sailing to the last couple of chests that I had found for one last hoorah. After all, I really didn't need anything from them. There's one chest down. Day 93 and I said hi to Lunar Island on the way to the second chest. And after sailing for a while, I got the final chest of this challenge. Then I spent the day sailing back. Sorry if I'm not saying too much about these last few days, there really isn't a whole lot to say about them. 
Day 94 and I say goodbye to the Lunar Island for the last time as I sailed back home. It was honestly looking really tempting after almost 100 days at sea. Got home and thought it would look cool to put some feathers around my Malvatross statue, along with the boomerang I used in the fight, just to add that little bit of flex to it. Did some loot box opening on day 95, right next to the bird, and the loot was okay, I guess. Then I tried to decorate base a little. You know, a little bit of TLC. Also dropped the eye mask that I completely forgot about by the Eye of Terror statue. Then I somehow made jam out of three eggs and a fig, which is kind of disgusting, if I'm being honest. Day 96, and it was technically the 100th day according to the in-game counter, but not for me. I placed a sign to make it a bit more homely. Then I just sat around organizing the base again and trying not to starve, even though my tin fishing bin was full. I kept forgetting about that though. On to day 97, my bird was really starting to look pimped out now. I went out and collected a few boards on this day because I had something special planned for tomorrow. Although I also forgot to make a new hammer, so... Whoops. On day 98, I finally had the resources I needed and went to meet an old friend. That's right everybody, I decided I was going to build a new house for Majorian, seeing as I kind of destroyed his old one. But hey, he also ran away from me, so you can't really blame me, can you? You would have done the same. I know, I know, this is breaking the rules. But I decided since it wasn't actually helping me in any way, it was probably fine, right? I built his new house right next to Pearl. That night, Mr. Hans came to give me a final goodbye in his own silly little way. On the morning of day 99, though, there was an intruder in Majorian's house. I did him the favor of killing him, but he wasn't too happy about the murder of his brethren. Luckily, he was fine after I let him eat the meat, though. Sharing is caring, after all. Also, a grass gator had made its way over to the island. I guess since the water logged and the island were connected by shallow water. It looked like this place finally had its own little community. It was about time for me to go. Pearl was crying a lot and it was kind of embarrassing, but I said goodbye and left for the last time. Then I dropped some stuff off at base and decided to make my way to the middle of the ocean. Then, on the morning of day 100, I dropped all of my fish into the ocean. I wouldn't be needing them. I made my way back to base and thought about everything that had led up to this, and now I almost died pretty close to the end. My little base had come a long way. So had I. Then I had slept in my tent for the first and last time. And finally, on day 101, I woke up and the challenge was done. I said goodbye to my base, leaving my bird to look over the place, and be the new captain for as long as it lived, which wouldn't be too long. I took a look at the map to see where all I had gone, and I was honestly pretty proud of what I had done. Then, I left for land. Arriving just a little too fast, though. I tapped onto the shore and my boat sprung a leak. I had the stingers I needed to repair it, and I did consider it, but honestly, this felt like the right way to let it end. So, after a while of waiting, it finally capsized, and that was the end of it. Except, there was one last thing to do. Thanks for watching everybody. Honestly, this is a really fun video to make, so I hope you enjoyed it. This was also my first time making a video like this, so I really hope it turned out alright. Now that's over, I can definitely say that I see the ocean completely different now. I'm gonna feel really weird going back to playing the game normally after this. Would I ever do this again? Definitely not. Although, it might be interesting to see how other characters do. My only regret is that I never found the Moonquay Island. Although, I definitely tried to. I honestly don't know where it was. I would definitely recommend giving this challenge a try though. Although, maybe not for 100 days, as it gets pretty tedious. All in all though, I'm pretty satisfied with what I was able to accomplish. I don't usually ask this, but if you enjoyed this video, then a like and subscribe would be greatly appreciated. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye bye.